So, good afternoon. First of all, I, I'd like to say a big thank you to Piotr and uh, the Honeynet project and CERT.PL team for inviting me here. I think it's, uh, it's uh, great to be here. Uh, a lot of good speakers, good presentations and a friendly atmosphere. I'm really uh, enjoying it pretty much. So, uh, yeah, I'm working with NSERC. Uh, which stands for NATO Computer Incident Response Team. And that team is uh, responsible for handling uh, security incidents in NATO networks. And uh, my talk uh, will be about uh, something that's called Malware Information Sharing Platform that we call the MISP, but I've heard also someone calling it MISP, which is kind of cool. So, uh, and this platform is... Uh, there to help uh, with uh, sharing um, threat information like indicators of compromise and other malware related technical information to improve security of uh, the organizations that participate. So here is the agenda of, of the presentation. I will de detail a concept and uh, will define a problem first. Then on, I will move to a little bit more detailed explanation about what the MISP is. And uh, the next uh, step would be to show a little bit our own instance of the MISP that we host at NATO. Because this is the instance, this is why we develop the MISP, this is why we invest uh, time uh, to develop it. It's an open source application, but we do it for our own uh, instance that uh, we give to our customers, which are the member nations of the Alliance. And I will uh, try to show a little bit, uh, a, a quick uh, demo uh, at the end on how the MISP, uh, to show uh, features of the MISP and how it can be used. So let's start. Um, a few years ago, when I joined uh, NATO, um, the situation when the answers when you asked uh, NATO uh, and the militaries that work there about information sharing is would be this: uh, Yes, we are fine. We can share information. So tell us everything, and uh, we will tell you where to stop. That's basically that was basically the information sharing for uh, the military and the intelligence community there. So we were trying to, um, we knew that we are, were facing the same threats. By saying, by saying threats here, um, I mean uh, more like the APTs, I will use uh, these words. Actually, NATO likes all the words Felix mentioned yesterday. We love those cyber threats, cyber warfare, and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm speaking about cyber threats here. So... And we were trying, we were thinking on uh, how to approach this um, and how to change this mentality. So um, um, we tried. Yeah, we knew we were we were facing the same threats, the same APTs, all of us. Maybe uh, maybe uh, with some exceptions, when one night, one NATO member is spying on another NATO member, that happens too. You can Google uh, GCHQ Belgacom and to see more information. It's public. But uh, in general, yeah, the uh, the threats we face are the same. So we basically uh, define the problem that yeah, it's a classical problem that everyone wants, to, every, everybody wants to eat, but no, nobody wants to cook. And. Uh, we were trying to explain them that there are part of information of, of these threat informations that can be shared and and uh, other part that they do not need to share the ones so the ones that they don't need to share uh, are these contextual information so we try to tell them don't tell us where it happened or how it happened where the target was what the impact and damage was because Excuse me, because uh, we know um, uh, you like to make it classified and sensitive. This, this community, this environment likes to classify information. So you don't need to tell us this. But 
uh, you can really tell us what the malware uh, hash was, for example, or what the command and control for servers were, because that can improve our common security if you share this. And uh, you can really make it unclassified. So, and here the MISP was born. Uh, so the MISP uh, is a te technical platform to actually support this idea, to make it simple. And um, it's just a simple knowledge base of uh, IOCs uh, and other malware-related technical information, like it says. It's, it's, it has a very, uh, very simple um, a database structure. You will see, I will speak about it in uh, more detail later on. Um, the principal function of it is the, the sharing. Uh, so, the inf to share the information between different organizations. Another principle of the MISP is uh, maximum automation around it. So, it should be deployed as fast as possible to the protection infrastructure of uh, of all the organizations and yeah, because the speed is uh, uh, very important here. So sec uh, we developed the MISP in the secu security is another thing. Uh, MISP hosts uh, sensitive information, so it, 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 it needs to be secure. And eventually uh, the last thing, community of trust, it should improve the trust globally between organizations. And we are actually observing this uh, in our own um, uh, instance of the MISP. So, yeah, these are some screenshots, but I will show a live demo, so I will skip that one. So, a little bit of history about how the MISP was created. So, uh, the idea and uh, the initial design and the code, uh, it was it was created by Christophe van der Plas from the Belgian Defense. Actually, the guy uh, created it uh, in his spare time after in after his, not as his uh, day job, but he brought it later on to his day job and showed it to his managers and they liked it. So he was able to start working on it in, uh, during his uh, day job. And at the same, at the same time, in NSERC, uh, we were thinking about building the, uh, the same thing because, I, as I explained, uh, we saw the need for uh, this kind of stuff. So. We actually saw it and we decided to join the effort and start developing it together with, with the Belgians. And then uh, we really wanted it to be open source because we wanted to, so that the application gains some uh, more uh, customers and be becomes a de facto standard in sharing. I know it's a very ambitious goal, but that was driving us to to actually try to make it open source. And this was a really uh, interesting uh, this was a really interesting uh, experience for me uh, because I had to write and convince managers that have no idea about what open source is to open source the code. So I actually had to to explain to them because, of course, uh, the usual argument is, yeah, but the Chinese will be using something. We give them for free and applications and they will use it. So I had to, to explain to them that if Chinese uh, won't use our application, they will find another application which is which has equivalent functionality and for you it really doesn't matter if they use it or not and, and, and things like that. But finally we, together with Christophe, managed to convince both of our management chains to, to open source it, so we did it. The current status is that uh, NSERC is uh, the only active development uh, party. We have a full-time developer on the MIS, Anders Iklodi, who is really uh, a great guy, very skilled, uh, very fast is op in answering all the GitHub questions that people ask, so feel free uh, to join and ask him questions. We have a very active user community, excuse me, and uh, like I say, we try to answer all the questions. So more in detail what the objectives of the MISP are. Uh, it's not, uh, the important thing is that it's not uh, yet another malware dump, that database or malware dump of uh, raw uh, analysis information. It, it's supposed to host uh, quality assured uh, information that, are, that has been reviewed by, by a human analyst. And uh, this information needs to be shared. So we provide some kind of mechanism to enable di different different levels of sharing, so you can choose a distribution for a, a piece of information to be shared. 
uh, closer or further away. And yes, security, I already mentioned it. Uh, so, uh, what f uh, features MISP provides? Uh, the sharing feature, uh, you can actually share locally on the same instance, so there, is a, there can be many organizations accessing one instance, but also each organization can have uh, their own instance of the MISP, and they can have multiple instances of the MISP, uh, internal, external, and uh, this is how it works. And those instances, uh, MISP has a mechanism to synchronize, to, yeah, to share, exchange automatically synchronized uh, those in instances. Uh, we, pro we have a RESTful API, which is kind of not really fully RESTful, but uh, it's, it allows a simple uh, integration um, uh, between the MISP and the protection infrastructure, so all your IDSs uh, and, uh, you know, uh, CMs, SIEMs, and uh, all the kind of stuff like that. Um, it's also quite, it's proven useful during threat intelligence because it, it provides some kind of, um, it tells you the correlation between different events. Uh, and it's kind of simple mechanism, but it really can be used to see the relationship between the events. Email alert, alerting, this is a basic feature, but quite uh, important. And we try to do some collaborative features as well, like the discussion threads uh, around the events. In the, in the context of event, you can start discussing it between different members. So, so benefits, uh, what are the benefits you can gain by adopting the MISP? Is the first thing is the the instant threat detection. If you properly integrate the MISP with your protection infrastructure, you will detect the threats that some other organization saw. Uh, you can you automatically gain a, a an internal uh, IOC repository, so you can stop using uh, Excel spreadsheets and stuff like that because this can be used also to host uh, indicators of compromise and this kind of stuff. Um, it eliminates duplications. Yeah, that's what we see on our uh, NATO MISP instance. Um, uh, sometimes many uh, organizations that are part of our uh, instance receive the same spear phishing email. And for example, one of, one of them starts to analyze it and post the results on the MISP. And then we see, oh, okay, that one was already analyzed, so we don't need to spend time on uh, doing the same, duplicate the work. So. Uh, the threat intel, like I said, uh, having information from different organizations, in bro it, it broadens the scope of, 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 of the threat intel view. And eventually confidence building, yeah, that's, that's, that's the important thing because by using the MISP, uh, you start to trust more. The trust level increases between all the organizations that are part of the project. So let's move to a little bit to an example of our own instance. So we use the MISP in NSERC as uh, our internal uh, uh, IOC uh, rep repository. We also upload malware samples there so that it can be shared. I didn't mention it, but, but you can also upload malware samples. So if you upload something, other organization can, can fetch samples and, and do their own analysis on them. Um, and we provide... Uh, access to the MISP for our for the member nations, so governmental and uh, national certs. Uh, and this is our uh, customer base here. Um, yeah, in turn, NSERG is quite a big uh, uh, a team. It has some something like 70 people, so we had to implement a role-based access control because we need to, to assign to some people just read-only access, some people can create events, other people can publish events, so more senior people can validate and publish events. So uh, we have that role-based access control in there too. We have some integration. Um, we have integrated it with uh, the IDS, with uh, ArcSight that we use. We have some integration, automatic integration with GFI Sandbox, which is uh, the sandbox that we use uh, as a primary sandbox uh, uh, to, to sandbox, the ma so sandbox malware. IOC Finder, well, it's not really an integration, but we sometimes use it on the endpoint to scan for, uh, for uh, hashes and stuff like that. 
Okay. Um, yeah. So this is an example on how uh, how we have integrated it with some of our partners. Like I said, this uh, you, uh, some of the organizations have uh, access via the web interface. They don't have their own instance of of the MISP. Uh, other organizations, like for example the Belgian Defense, uh, they have their own MISP organization and their own community and they uh, have a synchronization link with us, so they exchange information automatically with us. Uh, there are also other organizations that, uh, yeah, the, the current um, ecosystem is uh, bigger than that, but that's uh, the early stage of it. Uh, so we have different distributions. Uh, you can say when you create an event in the MISP uh, to distribute to all and it will be distributed and synchronized with uh, everything that's connected there. On the other hand, you can say your org only. That will be means it will be visible to only uh, one organization, no matter on which server. So, And then you have uh, the two in between. Your community only will only be, uh, be available for one community, like for example, NATO community there. Connected communities, it will be it will move one server forward and there it will become uh, lower to this community so it's it's a kind of tlp based thing but uh, a little bit a little bit different and it it gets uh yeah the distribution level in general gets lowered as it as it jumps to the next hop okay we skip that because that's the customers so the future perspective, what we want to do in the future in, for the MISP, uh, we want to move a little bit towards standards, like sticks. Uh, we have some problems with that because sticks really looks uh, very, very complex. And uh, that's, 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 that's the thing that will consume some time. Um, we want to have uh, even more uh, export and import we already provide a lot of uh, exporting and importing from different formats what well, we want to do cuckoo fireeye we have gfi because we use gfi and uh, yeah we have uh, thread connect for example uh, you can export import uh, into their open ioc stuff like that uh, we want to improve the sharing functionality so that you will be avail you will be it will be possible to tell, yeah, I want to share to this one, this one, this organization, and uh, not only based on the number of hops and stuff like that. Yeah, we have some perform, we need to do some performance improvements because MISB is not designed to host like millions of, of, of indicators there. We want to also have, a want, we want to do some uh, improvements in the UI interface to make it more, uh, more uh, interactive, and this is already partially implemented. I can show you uh, uh, in a minute, uh, and yeah, if you want to check it out, there is a, a public MISP instance created by a Belgian CERT, CERT.be. It's a very limited in functionality and only has a read-only access, but you can go there and, and, and check it out. It was created to only host OSINT data, so that Every other MISP uh, server can fetch that OSINT data from this server so that they do not, do not need encode, to encode all the information that gets published by different security companies, you know, like the APT1 reports, there was a, a lot of indicators, so it's supposed to work like that, that they publish it and everyone can fetch it down to their servers. Last time I checked a week ago, it wasn't really up to date. It was the last uh, the last entry there was uh, from February this year, so I don't know what's going on there. So a little bit of I'll show you now how the MISP looks like. So I need to duplicate that this place maybe. Okay. Oh, that doesn't really look very well on that. It, this is a low resolution. That that menu there uh, looks uh, a little bit better when uh, it's not that small. But anyway, so this is the home screen of the MISP. You have a, a list of events. And on the left-hand side, you have a contextual menu, menu here and, uh, and the global menu up there. 
So uh, you have a, you, are, you you see a different events. Uh, each event uh, has a distribution, like I said said here. When you click on the event, uh, you will see a number of attributes that this event that this event uh, contains. And uh, do you hear me? Yes. Okay. Fine. So um, uh, you can see here uh, a malware sample that has been uploaded that uh, anyone who has access to that event can can get, and it will be encrypted with a standard password. You see some uh, some uh, indicators like network activity indicators, actually. The MISP event is supposed to look nice for both human analysts and machines. So category here, like this network activity, payload delivery, uh, it adds a little bit of context to, to a human analyst, but type is the one that uh, is designed for machines. So, And then, uh, yeah, you have a number of attributes, and then if the attributes uh, has an IDS uh, parameter set to yes, that means it's a valid AO IOC. And, and it will be deployed and exported uh, exported to the protection infrastructure. I can show you uh, some of the export formats that we can do here. So here is the export that uh, the export formats that an analyst can click and 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 take. We have CSV, XML, a bunch of them. Uh, the automation here is uh, this is an explanation how you can access uh, all these data with uh, with the rest API and with scripts so you have um, all the other uh, l less important stuff like heat maps heat maps here heat maps were mentioned today so you can you know uh, put your Input, uh, yeah, put on uh, all the servers you want to synchronize on the list here and stuff, stuff like that. You can search, it's fully searchable, of course. You can tag events and, and stuff like that. So it's, 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 it's kind of simple, but it's, it's, uh, it works. And uh, one more use case, if I have time, uh, one more use case that I want, uh, wanted to show to you is uh, uh, the, in the, how you can integrate it for, uh, with the, oh, that's a kind of that's kind of sucks here. How you can integrate it with uh, with the, to do threat intel with Maltigo, for example. So I have written a, um, a simple transform. Do I still have uh, one minute, or it's it's really quick. Uh, a, a simple transform to integrate the MISP with, with Maltigo. So you can, you can, I think you know what Maltigo, what Maltigo is, the graph visualization tool. And you can actually interact with your own uh, MISP server. And here, for example, I manually placed, placed the, uh, the IP and I executed a transform that I have created that is here. To fetch all the events in in the MISP that that contain that IP, and then I got I got uh, I got six events. I cannot demonstrate it right now because my Maltigo license has just expired. So transform trans, <laughs> transforms don't work. But I have, I, as you can see, I have I have prepared all the uh, I have saved all the graphs that I. Uh, so I can explain how it works. So then you can hear what I did here uh, is uh, I, I selected all the six uh, events and I executed another transform that I, that I have created. And that transform, that transform uh, pulled all the uh, attributes that these six events contain. So it, it was kind of another, p another pivot or step in broadening the scope of... Um, of what you do here. So you can kind of visualize that, that data from the MISP. And not only that, because you can continue, if you have access to other OSINT information, um, um, like PDNS and stuff like that, you can keep, uh, keep uh, expanding your graph uh, based on the information on the MISP and the OSINT data, go further and further, 
and you can even find oh, that's will be difficult to show here, but yeah, here. So what I've done here is is I, I executed some uh, PDNS queries. Uh, so I got more uh, more IPs and more domains that were connected to um, to what I had in the MISP. Yeah, PD, passive DNS queries simply it will give you the um, the domains that were uh, resolved to the IP in the past. And here, as you can see, I found another relation between uh, the one event uh, in the MISP that is here, that I already had. It's one of the six that I got initially. And here I found another one that is a new one, which I didn't see before because it was not, not, related, not related. So I can discover this relationship based on the information uh, in the MISP and also some, some open source information. Yeah. I'm, I, I think I'm out of time, so no time for questions. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm actually... Yeah. Feel free to, to ask me, I'll be around. Uh, I'm here for that, so don't hesitate. Thank you very much again.